What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. I thought today I'd do a video on a new cooler that I picked up. This is the AeroCool Cool Plus. It's a little bit silly, it's a little bit over the top, but it's pretty cool and we're going to use it on the build soon. So I thought I'd just take you through what you get um, for a cooler that roughly cost about £14 from AeroCool. So to begin with, we'll take a look at what you actually get in this cooler. Uh, looking at the specifications, it has a TDP of 110, so it will pretty much support all of those processors that we've got out there. Maybe not the, the real high-end stuff, but pretty much there's, there's a lot that's actually covered in that. Uh, Socket-wise, on an Intel, it'll support from an LGA775 all the way up to anything that's an 11.5X. Uh, that's according to the packaging, although I do believe it'll also fit the 1200 as well, but you'd have to check their website for the latest pieces on that. Uh, for AMD, it'll fit pretty much all AMD sockets, so anything from the AM2 all the way up to the AM4, which means that it's quite a dynamic cooler, it'll pretty much fit anything. Speed-wise, the fan will run between 600 and 1800 RPM, uh, and there's the connection, it's a PWM 4-pin, so your motherboard can pretty much control it, all it needs to do anyway. This one in particular is an ARGB cooler, so we'll crack it open and we'll show you what you actually get for your money. Inside the box you will find a obviously the cooler. It's pretty much over the top in size. This is a whopping 120mm fan with ARGB, which is pretty cool, but it really makes it more of a statement piece than anything. You do have to be careful when installing this because it will overhang a little bit, so it may cover up your memory slot, particularly the first one that's closest to the CPU. I have tested it up on a couple of motherboards. On a full ATX board, it's not too bad. On anything that's a micro ATX or an ITX, you are gonna pretty much get some kind of overhang. So be careful which type of memory you have in height-wise, if you are gonna get one of these. Uh, the underneath is an aluminum frame. It's painted in black, so it actually blends in well with your motherboard. And it has a hooky system, which means it'll fit directly straight onto an AM motherboard. For an LGA, you do get some extra brackets, which we'll take a look at in a second. Wiring wise, you get a four pin PWM connection, which has got a bit of length to it, and they've included it in a black cable, so you can hide that quite well. And it has this very short two pin connection for the ARGB. Now it's a two pin specifically because it doesn't actually draw its power through here. What you get is another cable, which they provide, which adapts that two pin when we plug it in to a standard three pin ADRGB. Now that's really good that they've included an actual standard connection and not something that's proprietary, otherwise it wouldn't suit most builds. But this will connect to either your motherboard or a controller that you've installed in the system yourself. Now, because it's a two pin, it's not actually gonna get the power through this, it's only gonna get the data feeds. It does require the four pin connecting two for it to actually light up. We'll demonstrate that in a minute. Looking in the rest of the box, you obviously you get your instructions. Now these talk about how you can install it on the different motherboards and different sockets, as well as some extra specifications that you may need to know. You get a bracket for your Intel systems. So this basically just makes it, or adapts an Intel socket into one that's similar to an AMD, where you'll be able to use those hooks. Uh, they give you the pins, which actually hold this bracket down and clamp it to your motherboard and they give you a little bit of basically some, um, which is probably cheap stuff anyway, uh, some heatsink compound. Now, I generally use MX4. Lots of people have their own flavors of what they like to use, but it's good that they provided it in there just in case you didn't have any and you bought this cooler and you wanted to fit it, because obviously you will need that. If we take a look at plugging it in, what we'll first do is we'll plug in the three pin ARGB into just a very cheap controller that I've got here, which gives you some of the basic settings. And we'll turn the power supply on to show you what happens. So power supply has come on, as I stated before, there is no lights on here, and that's because it's only sending the data to this. What you need to also do is plug in the four pin PWM connection, which we've also got on our power supply here. Now that will instantly get this up to full speed because it's just running from the power supply and not a motherboard, so it's not controlling the speed. And as you can tell, it's not massively loud. At full speed, it probably is a little bit louder than what you'd expect. 
hold that to the mic so you can hear. Um, but it's not over the top, and with the motherboard actually controlling this, and you're going to get a lot lower speeds, it's going to be fine. The colours are really bright. The actual fan system is really, like I said before, more of a statement piece than anything in your case, because that's really going to highlight through any kind of window that you've got. And it's really going to complement anything that you uh, have if you like aesthetics in your machine. We can switch through the settings. Now this controller only has a couple of settings really, there's not anything massively on it. You have a bit of RGB puke, then you can go through some of your normal static colours. You can go for a full white. There's a couple of little modes on here. And then we go back to the full rainbow effect. As a cooler, the base is quite big. Like I said before, it will miss your RAM, but only just on some of the smaller motherboards. Um, but it is producing a hell of a lot of air. It's, it's coming off really, really well. So I could imagine that the 110 TDP is more than efficient for this, this cooler. Um, this cooler costs roughly about £14, so it's actually on the budget side of everything anyway. But it really will make a statement piece in your machine for a very little cost. So if you've got something that just like a stock cooler and you just want to switch it over, this is probably quite an ideal thing to go for if you want some RGB. So I hope you like this video and this demonstration. This one in particular is going to be used in an upcoming bit of a budget build. It's actually a bit of a rebuild on one of the machines that I've got. Um, so make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit the notifications button so that you get uh, any of the new videos going forward because you'll be able to get that one. Uh, give me a like on this video in particular and I'll see you again next time.